you join us and we are doing a review of the Ineos Grenadier pickup, which is called the, I think I've got it written on the other side, but not this side. What's that? It's called the Quartermaster. We've just been to McDonald's and had a quarter pounder, haven't we, Destiny? But maybe we'll talk about that a bit more as we go through the video. So in this video, we've done a review of the Grenadier. Now, we all know it's this Land Rover styled, built on purpose, four by four. And I was quite excited to see they bought a pickup version because I have had a pickup since I lived in Thailand. A pickup has been part of my life. And I actually drive the Nissan pickup every day. And in this video, I'm gonna compare some facts and figures to my Nissan Navara MP300 pickup truck. So let's have a walk around it. Let's take some general observations. Then we'll dive into the weights and dimensions. Then we'll have a talk about who would buy it, what's cool, what's my own personal view on it, what, what do I think of it? Right, so let's have a look. So let's focus, and we'll focus mainly on the whole pickup part of this truck. So obviously they cut it down here and they've added a pickup, and the lines flow really nicely. They've really streamlined, it all comes straight off the shape of the car. Almost like when they designed it, they knew there was gonna be a pickup version. We got the flared arches here, which match the front ones beautifully. Um, you can see the suspensions all under here. So obviously the pickup is longer. They have made it longer. Um, and one problem with making it longer is they seem to have added a lot of length behind this rear wheel. And the approach angle, which, sorry, the departure angle, which is as you come off a bump or a mountain, it's, it's where this scrapes. Now, it's pretty low. I'll put the figure on the screen now. Actually, let me just check it. So I've just checked my little cheat sheet and it's only 22 degrees. So you want the higher the figure, the better. So you really want it like this. On my Nissan Navara MP300 double cab pickup, it's 26 degrees. So, you know, this is built on purpose. This is supposed to be a rugged off-road four by four pickup, but they've really let themselves down a bit on this departure angle. Now, I'm not even sure if that takes into account the tow bar. So if you just get a bit, you see the tow bar comes down here. Right, while we're here, let's, let's dive. Um, and let's, let's have a look at the back and we'll dive underneath in a minute. So we've got a, so the pickup body is made from steel. These sides are steel, they're magnetic. These corners I think are plastic. They might be aluminium. The tailgate itself is aluminium and it's really quite light. It's not too bad at all. I can nearly do it with well, one finger, two fingers. I can definitely lift it up. Interestingly, it's got a locking tailgate. Now, even if you've got the top open, having the lock, the ability to lock the tailgate is actually quite handy. And Destiny was saying, oh, that's quite cool. It's just a proper lock, a key lock. And actually, sometimes just the key lock is the job. The third brake light is here. Sometimes on the pickups, it's at the back, but they've gone for the third. You'll notice also there's a rear view camera. Now, I've just checked, obviously to check that we've got to start the car and put it in reverse, which is tricky to do in the showroom. So the guys have been very helpful and they've started off. I'll put the picture on the screen now of the view you get from this camera and you can clearly see, you can see the tow bar and the whole area, so that's brilliant. But one thing I wanted to check was when you lower the tailgate, um, what does the camera see? And actually, it points to the tow bar, which is a really cool feature because you could still almost reverse a trailer up to it with the, with the tailgate down. So that was quite cool. Obviously, you can't reverse your truck because your end of your truck is where the tailgate is and the camera's covering this area. But that's, there we go. I thought this plastic cap was really useful. All the bits you're gonna touch or lean on, I've got this plastic cap in. We've got a similar thing on uh, Nissan. The Nissan's got a little swooshy spoiler, but it does give you this useful area here to rest stuff on. The rear lights look like they're off the standard vehicle. One thing I sort of would have liked, one thing I use loads on the Nissan and the Toyota and the Mitsubishi, is they've always had a step bumper, so you can step on it, and they've got a tread plate. But here, where we're much more likely to be standing on here than we would in the normal Grenadier, we've got no anti-slip tread pattern. So we're gonna be slipping all over the place if we've got muddy boots in a field. So I think they need to look at this, maybe even get some bits of aluminium checker plate or something on 
there. Right, let's drop the tailgate and take a look. So the tailgate is a pretty standard construction. You've got these wires. Um, it's really quite light. So I have seen some pickups with a damper. So as you lower it, it goes down. But I don't think it's needed in this case. It's got the conventional lock. We've got some tie down points. The gap here is really quite good. It's a lot smaller than the gap on my Nissan. And whenever you're pushing something in, a bit of furniture or something, the feet always drop in this gap. So that's quite good. Although one thing you'll notice, if I put it up, you might be able to see, is that you can still see, I don't know if Destiny can get it on the camera, but you can still, you can see straight through, which I don't think you can do on the Nissan. There's quite a big gap down there. Not sure it's a real problem, more of an observation. Right, so we bought a pallet with us. Um, so that's a standard Euro pallet, 1.2 meters by 0.8. And you can see there's absolutely loads of room, even between the wheels, the wheel arches. Right, talking of wheel arches. So this car is fitted with this optional roll bar and you can see the wheel arches. Now, the spare wheel is supposed to live in the wheel well on that side there. There is a dip here, but this isn't wheel shaped. So this looks more just like a storage. It almost needs a bin or something to, to go in here. But one thing that I noticed was this, this sort of triangular section here. And it's not present on the other side, if you flash back to the other side. Um, so I was a bit confused why that was, but it actually it sits over the fuel filler. So it must be the fuel filler in it. But it's quite a big chunk. They could have moved it a little bit more into this corner actually while we're around the side one thing we like on the Ineos is this ability to have this side utility rail where you can clip things in this car doesn't have it but it's an option and you can see the fitting it would have been nice to have continued that along this section here because this is quite a big long panel right so everyone's looking at this video and they're going he hasn't mentioned the spare wheel so the spare wheel currently is sat there and Destiny just sat in and so I can't see anything out the back window with that spare wheel there. So it, it gives you more load space but at the, at the price of, um, well A you've got to get it down from there and secondly visibility. But um, on most pickups that I've owned, all pickups I've owned, the spare wheel lives underneath. There's normally a big area. So I'm like why? Why have Ineos decided not to use the space created underneath? So let's dive underneath and have a look what's going on down there. Right, you join me. Look, I knew I shouldn't have put my shirt on today. It's Breast Cancer Awareness Day today, so we've got some pink going on. Right, but look, 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 look. So there's this massive space here, huge space. I don't know how well you can see it on the, but you've got these two chassis rails either side. Yeah. And, the tow bar is actually bolted to the rear cross member of the, of the chassis, which is right at the back. There's no bracing across here. So, so we've actually got even more room than normal. And all this space here, everything here, is taken up with this huge silencer. And it's got an input that comes in here and it's got these two outputs. And it, it tickled me that they've slash cut these outputs, which is normally for a departure angle. But I, I think they kind of missed the point. The departure angle is way back there, but, but we'll give them 10 out of 10 for effort maybe. Um, but I think if this exhaust could have been smaller and not so humongous, um, you could have got the spare wheel in here. And if you're not gonna put a spare wheel, develop some accessory, or, or they could have reshaped the, the floor to have had a big cutout in it, where you could have had a massive toolbox under the floor of the pickup. So, I think that's a massive waste of space under there. And bear in mind, with the double cab pickup, you've, you've, if you've got four people in it, you haven't got much room for luggage. So often your luggage is in the back. So space can soon become a premium. And a, a watertight area under the boot floor that was secure could have actually been a really useful feature. Right, let's carry on. Right, let's take a look in the inside. So obviously where this was a saloon or a SUV and it's now, turned it into a pickup they've had to slice the back off and one thing that's always interesting on pickups is they often compare the angle of the back seat because sometimes the back seat is so upright 
you're sort of, you can't sit comfortably. Now, although we've measured the angle of this, and it's not too bad, it was like 69 degrees, 70 degrees. It's not too bad. Um, I think it, it sort of comes out here a, a bit more. Um, but the leg room is limited. I think, I think where they've increased the seat angle, what it effectively does is push the bottom of the seat more forward where they've tried to get some angle. So, so we've got limited amount of space, but the seats are super comfy. And those front seats are lush, aren't they, Destiny? We were sat in those earlier and they are nice, comfy seats. Again, we've got, I mentioned this on the Grenadier review, they've got these gloss black trims, which on a, S, on a pickup, um, it really, I don't know, built on purpose. I just think there's, um, I think, have you got any reflectors on the door for safety there, Destiny? Anything that's gonna, no, we could have done with some reflectors on the door for safety. Right, let's have a look. What else have we got in the back? We've got basic aircon. Um, the rear seats do, they are, interestingly, they're, um, they're split. That's it. Go on, you've got it. Um, so you've got the space here. Now, this obviously can be used for a second battery, um, which was an option. It's not fitted to this model. So you've got under seat storage. In fact, there's not so much on, um, actually, these, you know, these would have been better if they're on the more solid straps because because you've got to sort of do that whole hold it up and hold on i've got to twist it and oh, oh that's a bit tricky um right then let's have a look what's under this one okay so there you've got a bit of storage space but you've got the main fuse box and the main battery under there again you've got to hold this up as you sort of get that back in which is oh what Hold on, there you go, yeah, that's good. We got some basic controls here. Um, extra power points, let's, let's talk about the power points. So one thing about pickups is often you want work lights mounted on the back. Now, interestingly, this pole here hasn't got any mounting points for work lights, but you can get those clamps that clamp on. Um, the other thing then is you would need power out, auxiliary power outlets. Now, there's no auxiliary power outlets I could see in the pickup bed. And there's also nothing. So for example, it would have been cool to have a USB charger. So if you were working in the field and you wanted to plug your phone in, you often use your pickup as a bit of a, a sort of desk, a workspace. So a, a charger near the back would have been good. And I would have expected to have an auxiliary power point along this back panel. That would have been handy. Um, we've got some short roof rails here. We got the standard windows, the little mini sunroofs at the front, which is cool. Roof aerial here. Right, so this is quite a big beast now. Excuse me as I read my figures, but it's 5.4 meters long, which is like 100 millimeters longer than my Nissan Navara. Now, obviously that's great, and we've got the, actually we've got parking sensors at the back and the rear camera, so maneuvering it's not gonna be too much of a problem. And we got the nice straight sides that we can see down clearly. Um, but one thing if you're towing, I always found towing when we had the caravan and the double cab pickup, it's a really hard to tow because it's a very long vehicle train. And obviously they don't do a 90 version of the Grenadier. Um, so often a short pickup would be better, but the long pickup is fine. But it also has other side effects, like it increases the already large turning circle to a quite massive, 14.5 meters is the turning circle for the for this um, quartermaster. So that's one thing to think about. With the length comes um, problems with maneuverability. This is also wider than the Nissan Navara. It's way wider um, than the original 130 Defender pickup. The wheelbase is 127 inches. So you can see that's very similar to the 130 pickup. Interestingly, the departure angle on the OG Defender, this angle at the back, was a lot bigger. Yeah, so on the original, it was a whopping 35 degrees, which would match the front, which would be a lot better. So obviously, they, this, there's a lot of extra out the back here. Now, the real problem, or the real challenge with the Ineos, where they've made it taller, wider, bigger, which kind of gives it more physical presence, and um, it makes it not so good because of the weight. So the weight is quite a monstrous is 2.7 tons, in fact it's over 2.7 tons. 
Now it varies slightly if you've got the diesel or the petrol engine, but that compares to 1.9 tons for my Nissan Navara. So this has got like 800 kilograms. Now, I don't know what I weigh, I must be about 80 kilograms or something, but that's like 10 extra people. Somehow they've managed to squeeze the weight of 10 extra people in this car. So, and I guess that's the big chassis, uh, they haven't used, we'll have a look at when we're underneath, we saw the big axles. So I think a lot of heavy components, which I'm sure Ineos would argue adds to its ruggedness and its durability, but it's kind of killed it. Now, the problem is that in the UK to get company car tax um, benefit in kind to use your car as a company van, it has, you have to be able to take a one ton payload. But this can only take a payload of 750 kilograms. Now, a Volkswagen Caddy van, apparently, according to the internet, can take 775 kilograms. So a Volkswagen Caddy van can take more weight than this. And that's not because it's not man enough to take the weight. The car's not going to collapse. It's because with a ton in the bag, you'd go over the 3.5 tons that is the legal limit of what car you can drive with a normal license in the UK. And obviously it's rated at that. So anything over 3.5 to total would be overloading it. And bear in mind that that, that, five, that 750 kilograms includes also the weight of your passengers. So you can deduce that from it. Um, and other luggage you've got in your trucks, if you've got tools and stuff, that has to come off what you can actually put in the back. So you can't go down wicks and put a ton bag of sand in the back. And to give you an idea of the benefit in kind tag, for the Nissan, it would be about 2.4 thousand pounds would be the equivalent salary you've earned. But for, for the Ineos, it's a whopping 24,000 pounds. So it's like you've earned 24,000 pounds extra that you'd be taxed on. So really, a, a lot of people will be wanting a double cab pickup to have a low benefit in kind, but you can't do it with the, um, unless you do something inventive, but check with your tax advisor. But generally, no, you won't better use it with a low benefit in kind. The other problem with weight and being heavier is obviously your braking's hit harder, your acceleration's more difficult. And even though this has got the 245 brake horsepower six cylinder BMW engine, it's not to 60, is barely one second different to my 2.3 litre um, Nissan Navara MP300. So it's got about extra 80 brake horsepower, but that doesn't translate into better acceleration or top speed. The top speed of this is quoted at 99 miles an hour, and it's 112 for the Nissan Navara. So, I mean, I don't know if they've limited it to that speed or whether it's just its aerodynamic brickness limits it to that. But there we go, so, so weight is a real problem. So at the start of the video, we talked about the, uh, the, um, the quarter pounder. So then I'm trying to allude to the fact that perhaps it could do with not eating so many quarter pounders. Um, and then it might be a better quarter master. Reminds me of my joke, doesn't it? That Jim Ratcliffe, he doesn't do anything by halves. He does everything by quarters. He's got the quarter master and apparently he could only afford a quarter of Man United. So he's bought a quarter of that too. Um, oh, incidentally, so I've had some fun. Last week, um, Ineos published its annual results. So I thought in preparing for this video, I'd look at their results and look at what their achievements are. And they're congratulating themselves that they're actually starting production. And obviously this is for the previous year's um, sort of financial results. It's only just been published. But there were some slightly worrying things in there as well, and some interesting things. Um, so their total debt for Ineos Automotive UK Limited was 1.7 billion euros. Now, that is a huge amount of debt. That's like the debt of a small African country. Um, so Jim Ratcliffe has poured loads of money into this project to create these cars, um, but he's also created a lot of debt in doing so and in fact there is a statement on page four of their thing that says the company's got so i'll put the exact quote on the screen but basically in first there's a lot so much debt that the company could struggle to pay its um its debt commitments which is slightly worrying and that's taken from Ineos's own financial report but they also go on in the report to say they've signed a partnership with magna 
to develop an EV. And this was quite interesting, and I'll probably do another video on that. But it looks like they've done a, and then I researched Magna, and they've done a partnership with a company called REE. And they've got some really cool electric technology. And one of the INEOS announcements is that they are gonna make a small, and it looked a bit 90 styled, electric car. And my bet is they're gonna use the REE corner drive system. So it'll have four electric motors, one in each corner. And it'll be able to, and it also has four wheel steering, if my guess is right. Um, and that would be totally awesome. So I'm gonna summarize. So this is a great looking truck. And for some people, oh, price. This is about twice the price of a similar Isuzu or Nissan pickup. Nissan are actually exiting the UK pickup market, which is interesting because um, Ineos are trying to come into it and Nissan have decided it's not worth doing. Their sales were so low, they've got out. So one's coming in, one's coming out. Anyway, where was I going, Destiny? I've forgotten. So the Grenadier, so uh, the Quartermaster, it's a great looking truck. It's a nice bit of kit, let's be honest. And it's got a physical presence. And I think part of it is designed to pose rather than designed on purpose. Um, I don't think it's any coincidence that the CEO of Ineos was previously a project manager working on the G-Wagon um, at Magna. And maybe that's got some, maybe it's got some G-Wagon proportions and maybe that's why it's eaten a few too many pies and it's got a bit big um, and, and I think some of the packaging could be better the spare wheel and some other bits and pieces but it's a great looking truck I personally don't as an engineer I like innovation and things to move forward and I don't I'm not the biggest fan of the Grenadier as a vehicle for the future although for many people some of it's back to basics although they don't do a manual it's automatic only so there's some back to basics and some not it's one of it what I do love is Ineos have had the gumption to bring a totally new car, a new car brand, a new car company to the market, which gives consumers, whether we like it or you like it, um, choice, which I think is brilliant, and it challenges other brands, which can only be a good thing. But what I also really like is the fact that Ineos are changing their way. Now, it's almost ironic, isn't it? They started copying Land Rover and wanted to sort of bring the dinosaur back to life, but now it looks like they may even beat Land Rover to an all-electric 4x4, which would be totally awesome. And that's why I love Ineos, um, and I love that they've got a biomass plant being installed at their factory in Hamback in France. The fact that they do seem to be progressive. They are starting to innovate, and I, they've done a complete U-turn from looking to the past to look into the future and that's what excites me and uh, I'm going to keep a close eye on INEOS and this new all-electric vehicle so keep watching.